had a feeling this was a tackle box. I had no idea it was gonna be like this. <laughs> okay, let's open this sucker up and see what this is. <gasps> Anything in there? <laughs> what is that? What? Retro bassin, kicking some ass in, wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome to Retro Bassin. As you guys probably know by now, we've been in a little bit of a transition state here on the channel and also in life. But we are now settled in Northeast Florida in the brand new and improved, hopefully, Retro Bassin studio. Waylon and I are sitting in front of our pretty epic tackle wall, and this one is definitely going to be a work in progress over the coming months, I am sure. But we thought it would be a great backdrop today for a little unboxing video. In the course of the move, I've gotten a few good pieces of mail from some bass and buds around the country, and I've been sitting on them with the express purpose of opening them for you guys on camera. So today we're going to go through some mail. Hopefully we're going to open up a piece of old school gold or two. Hopefully you'll enjoy. Oh, by the way, if this is your first time here at Retro Bass and, and you like to fish at old school, talking about classic rods, reels, lures and equipment from fishing days gone past, well, stick around, consider subscribing, and be sure to hit that bell icon because if you don't, you won't know when we post a new video just like this one. All right, Waylon, let's get on with it. What's the first piece of mail that we have? Okay, so it's this white bag. All right, so this is a uh, package that got sent to me from Larry Lucas, who is a member of the Florida Antique Lure Collectors Club. And he and I met at a recent show down in St. Augustine. He said he had a pretty cool piece of bass fishing paraphernalia from his youth, or at least from his younger days, that he was going to share with us. So this is from Larry. Let's check it out. So I do know what this is. Larry was a member of a Florida Bass Club and he said he had a OG jacket that he wanted to share with us. Ready? Whoa! That's very retro. <laughs> it is very retro. So this is a pretty sweet jacket. Looks well used in a nice Florida Gators blue and orange. And what does it say on the back there? Bass Master Gator Country. Bass Masters of Gator Country. So <laughs> that is a really cool jacket. Looks like that's a large. That might be a little bit big for you, Waylon. <laughs> One day. Uh, but that is a pretty cool jacket. I'll definitely have to rock that on the water uh, if we ever get on the water again. Thank you, Mr. Larry, for that one. And Gainesville, Florida. Very nice. All right, what do we got next? So. Another bag? Another bag. Okay, so recently I actually did a, a couple of different podcasts with uh, Joe Carmel over at the Cut and Retie. Uh, he's a really good dude from up in New Jersey, and I sent him a little retro bass and care pack, and Joe returned the favor. So let's see what Joe sent us. Ooh. I think it might be a shirt. Sounds something hard in there. There's something hard in here. I'll pull up the, the non-hard thing first. Ah, oh, there we go. So that is a pretty sweet cut and retie shirt. I'll Whoa, hold it up for- Whoa, that's cool. <laughs> Look at that. That's retro chic. I do like that actually. That's pretty sweet, isn't it? Wow. That's the logo from the podcast. And if you have not listened to this podcast, it is definitely worth a tune in. And I can't tell, that's a, that's a large. So yeah, I should- uh, I should fit into that today for sure. That's a pretty sweet shirt, huh? That's really nice. Thank you, Joe. And what else do we have here? Oh, a little mystery envelope. Huh? I don't know what that is. That's a... <laughs> what do you think this is? Um. Oh, looks like some 
<laughs> Hold on, we got some really cool stuff. Uh, what? So it looks like a number of different slaps. I will hold these up for you. Uh, what does this one say? So it says, floaters only, B uh, word, uh, cut uh, and retie. <laughs> Look at that. <gasps> Look at this one. That's that say. Oh, there's a nice one. Uh, classic cut and retie logo. I actually like that one a lot. That That's... one could go on the old retro wagon. Ooh. Got another one. Whalen, maybe that one's for your tackle box. Yes, that'd be perfect. <laughs> Ooh, Whoa. what does this say? Stock options, finless brown. Dude, he's got some pretty sweet slaps. <laughs> I like these. <laughs> I and I think these awesome. are actually available for sale on his website. I will drop all of the cut and retie information down below. Oh, there's another one. Stock Ooh. options, cut and retie. Looks like tumor bow. <laughs> these are pretty sweet. We just have like one slap option at Retro Bass, and he's got like 10. <laughs> We need to step up the game. Golden ticket. Uh oh, what? Uh, Is that Willy Wonka? A little, little, little Willy Wonka action there. <laughs> <laughs> Two more classic cut and retie slaps. So we will definitely have enough of these for, for everywhere. That's yes. pretty cool. Ah, cut and retie. Ooh. Oh, so it looks like an old like uh, a camera lens or something. <laughs> I'm not even gonna read that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll put that one on mom's car. Be oh, I mean, then. That'd be sweet. And then he sent me this, which is I was I saw this early in the uh, <laughs> package, but I thought I would save it. it. Says Atlantic City, and it is a postcard. Looks like it's from around 1987 or so. It says hello from New Jersey. Uh, and that might be just about the most glorious postcard I have ever gotten. <laughs> That's going to have to go up somewhere on the uh, retro bass in studio. That is a... Uh, <laughs> I For some reason, I feel like Joe like had this in his personal collection. He's just been sitting on it for a couple of decades looking for the <laughs> right opportunity to use it. And yeah, buddy, he found one. <laughs> hey, Ron, you better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two more pieces of mail. What do we have next? Uh, so this is a nice little box from the Edgar family in Yazoo City, Mississippi, which by the way is a great, uh, great little city with a great little brewery in there. So let's go ahead and check out this thing. I'm kind of curious to what this is. I think I knew at one point, but we've had this mail call sit for so long that I, I totally forget it. And we'll see. to see what we got from Yazoo City. Ooh, oh, so it looks like some lures and a note. So let's Ooh. check out the, the note first. Mm -hmm. Ooh, looks like a long note. Oh. All right, so this is uh, from Will, Helen, and Jamie Edgar in Yazoo City, Mississippi. Ooh, sent back in January, so this has been here for a minute. Uh, dear Retro Bassin, the Edgar family in Yazi, Mississippi hopes that you and your family have a blessed Christmas and an awesome New Year. And uh, it is June, so we did, but thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy your online content tremendously. I caught my first bass at age 13 and a number five Rapala floating minnow and have been hooked on bass fishing ever since. I've enclosed three head and moss balls topwater spoons for you and the bass and buds to try out. Ooh. Uh, enclosed is also one of each, a white, black, and chartreuse. Oh, that's pretty sweet. So three moss balls. That's a, nice. that's a good topwater bait for some weedy lakes. It is fished on top like a frog, but works best in extremely matted vegetation. Uh, heavy line is a must for these lures. The only thing missing from these lures is the snap that you need to attach the lure to your line. Uh, it's a standard snap that uh, links without a snap swivel. 
Uh, I've also enclosed a never used package of three DOA saltwater plastic lures, Ooh, Ooh. which we could use on the old Trout Scout. Uh, we live in central Mississippi, so the coast is quite a long drive for us. And uh, we have a nonverbal autistic son who doesn't like long car trips. And you wouldn't like long car trips if it wasn't for your iPad, so I get it. <laughs> uh, these should come in handy uh, for y'all, and they're supposedly great for sea trout and redfish. Look forward to your response in upcoming videos and keep fishing at old school. Will Edgar. Awesome. Well, let's check out what the Edgar family sent to us. Oh. And ooh, I do see a pretty sweet tackle box. Nice DOA tackle box. Wow. Ho, ho, ho. There we go. Old school gold. Probably could have used these uh, spoons this spring. Mm -hmm. So first off, we'll crack open the Head and Moss Boss. Wow. Uh, this is a pretty cool classic lure. Ah, uh, looks like we've got some living rubber that is no longer alive. I'll have to, to work on those separately. Wow. All right, but there's a nice chartreuse moss boss. A little bit of orange or red at the nose. And then there is a black Ooh. shad. I like that. It's a black with a little bit of gold. I might as well just rip the bandit off and pull those two apart. We're going to have to replace those skirts, but luckily we have some behind us on the retro basin wall. So two nice moss bosses that are definitely going to be fishers. And ooh, this white one. Mm. I kind of like that as well. That's a good looking bait. Nice white moss boss. This is interesting. It's a plastic spoon, but it fishes on top. It is so light that really it doesn't do much under the water. But extremely mad of vegetation. It kind of rides like that. It's got a single hook. Probably use some braided line on there and just cast that and reel that across the surface and a big old Florida bass will come up and smoke it. <laughs> and oh, we've also got some DOA lures here as well. So the DOA uh, Shrimp Terrorize Cal Series. Check that out. All right, so we've got ah, a couple of shrimps here. So these would definitely be some Ooh. fishers. These are, these are actually great baits. We've got some paddle tails as well. And then we've got, looks like uh, sort of the non-paddle tail, just sort of the standard uh, fish body. So fish body, paddle tail, and the old shrimp. We'll have to put those on the old trout scout. Yeah. Well, thank you, Edgar family, for that. We really appreciate the uh, kit, and we will definitely use some of this old school gold. <laughs> All right, we have one more package to go through, and this one is a big one. Last but not least. Last but not least. This comes from our Bass and Bud, Bob, who I was fortunate enough to fish with earlier this year with small water charters uh, down at a little lake in central Florida. Bob had been a subscriber of the channel for a number of years, and I got wind that he was going to be uh, booking a couple day charter with John of small water charters and snuck on down there and met him by surprise at the boat ramp. We had a pretty fun day on the water. Definitely we'll put a link to that video down below, but to return the favor, Bob sent me this. What's in there? Sounds like a tackle box. Oh. It's got a springy sound to it. <laughs> Hopefully it's not live bait because uh, this is a long time ago as well. Would not smell the best. It would not. Gotta work on my night technique. I'm a little rusty. <laughs> All right, so we've got something very, very big here. Whoa. And a oh. lot of bubble wrap. <laughs> uh. What is this? Whoa. <gasps> bait File Willy Bait Company. Huh? I have no idea. This is. I had. Man, okay. So look at this giant, beautiful box of, I don't even know what that is. What? Bait file. Huh. <laughs> Looks like a tackle box of sorts, but that's a pretty glorious looking tackle box, isn't it? That's crazy. Never heard of this. This is, looks like an old school tackle box. It's got some uh, sort of joints in the back here. And this opens up somehow. We gotta check this out. <laughs> I had a feeling it was a tackle box. I had no idea it was gonna be like this. <laughs> okay, let's open this sucker up and see what this is. <gasps> Anything in there? What is that? 
wants I don't... springs. Okay, so there's springs. So somehow you hook... Looks like you hook the lures to the spring. Oh. And then put them up on the... Oh, my goodness. Almost looks like some sort of dealer display. That looks crazy. That does look crazy. I've never heard of that. A couple of handles right here, which I think you could probably put up there. That'd be, that'd be awesome for the lore convention. This would be good for the lore convention. Oh, jeez. It's like a mouse trap. <laughs> <laughs> so that is, that is one of the wildest looking tackle boxes I think I've ever seen. Bob, if you don't mind, go ahead and drop a comment and tell me a little bit about where you got this because I've never seen something like this before and this is pretty, pretty sweet. Let me see this handles. So, I'm assuming. What? Never seen a tackle box like this. I've never seen a tackle box like this. One goes here. One goes here. There you go. Look at that. Holy cow. That's crazy. Well, Bass and Bud, Bob, thank you so much for sending this piece of old school plastic gold. This is totally going to be a display piece somewhere in the Retro Bass's studio. I need to hear more about this thing. This is, this is wild, but I don't think I dare actually load this up with tackle and take it on the boat because it seems a little bit uh, fragile, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> and while we go ahead and put this away, if you guys are looking for some more old school content, you can click right here. Otherwise, we'll see it right back here, same time, same place. And until then, keep that carpet side up, and definitely. Fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassoon.